This is the Marketing Umbrella Podcast, where it's all about getting the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. Brought to you by Itumar Shafir, founder and CEO of Umbrella, the technology platform and brand that is powering thousands of marketing agencies around the country. Find him at UmbrellaUS.com. Now, here's your host, Kevin Pruitt. I want to welcome you to the Marketing Umbrella Podcast. My name is Kevin Pruitt. I'm the new host, but I am so excited to be able to start this new phase of the Marketing Umbrella Podcast that Itamar Shafir has done such a great job of laying a great foundation in the first 40 episodes or so. But I have a very special guest with me today. This is Arjun Rai, founder of HelloWoofy.com, New York City-based entrepreneur, and has been networking with some of the most well-known entrepreneurs in the city and globally. A few weeks into college, he launched a startup called FuelBright.com, a social media agency focused on small businesses and startups, and a student-focused organization called The Biz Den. His third startup, Workbench.io, was a virtual collaboration space designed for creatives. After spending a few years learning the ins and outs of running a venture-backed startup, he set out to modernize another industry related to his former passion of social media. This startup would become Hello Woofy, a social media management platform driven by artificial intelligence to help small to medium-sized businesses with digital marketing. It's been featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes, Inc., MarTech Today, Search Engine Land, NASDAQ, Small Business Trends, and more. As you can see, we are in the presence of a serial entrepreneur. Arjun, thank you, and welcome to Marketing Umbrella Podcast. No, I appreciate it, and thank you so much for your kind intro. Um, yeah, hello from still Vermont, uh, as was mentioning uh, before the show started. I'm here actually to support Greg, uh, who's one of our investors, and I met him at a mastermind. Latest thing, by the way, is uh, getting into masterminds. It's the best way to meet potential customers, potential clients, and channel partners. And so I'm on a 18th city, 15th city tour right now, multiple masterminds, conferences. And, uh, and that's actually the way, the way of the future, in my opinion, is not to go big with conferences, but go small with masterminds. And uh, so I'm here in Stowe, Vermont, speaking in a few days. And uh, so hello from here. Usually we're in New York City. <laughs> well, that is quite a trip. And we, we were kind of joking a little bit about uh, you know, the differences in working in Stowe versus New York yeah. and, the, and even real estate prices. But Arjun, I, I really, I, we, I did the intro, but there's so much more to you. So is there anything that we haven't kind of laid the foundation for for this, this episode? Yeah, I think um, one of the things I love talking about is the whole notion of an underdog. We say, I mean, it says on my on the back of my shirt uh, for Hello Wolfie is uh, smart marketing for underdogs. Underdogs being small business owners, you know, people who are scrappy, you know, they need, you know, a lot of resources, you know, help, but, you know, they're, they're you know, trying to make it on their own and, uh, you know, beat their competition as unlimited resources. And so we love supporting the underdog, being the underdog ourselves in our industry. And so funny, actually, just got an email from a competitor, you know, trying to do some sort of collaboration. We've had so many co conversations with competitors in the last few months. Um, we are definitely stirring the, the well, right, uh, with, with our technology. And, and so we just love supporting un underdogs and so small businesses. One of the things that we've done very uniquely to build our business is when we were told, you know, go away, you're too early or go away, you're in a saturated market. We said, why don't we actually turn around to our customer base we, you know, and, and say, why don't we raise capital from you? And give you the upside right so i think we talked about this uh, a few months ago is equity crowdfunding is very powerful yeah. most yeah. campaigns only raise 50 maybe seventy five thousand dollars. we've raised 1.2 million and a lot of that capital came from business owners like you like me underdogs a lot of them are our own customers that invested and uh so you know huge uh you know i told you, know, told you so kind of uh, approach to our, our venture capital friends who turned us down but it's okay. We we gave you know we raised 1.2 million and and the people who deserved it the most in the, in terms of getting the upside are the is the public and equity crowdfunding was helpful with that. So we can talk about a lot of different ways we built our business in in, in the marketing space. Well, I, I remember when we were we were talking earlier that you mentioned the the as you flipped the script so to speak on on kind of the funding side of things and it's really interesting. I mean, there's one thing about, oh, yeah, you, you know, throw us a hundred bucks and you can have a free yeah. for subscription or something like that, but it was a little more than that. So what was, what was kind of the offer that, that was, you know, enticing? Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to have people that just, you know, kind of raving fans just love you and want to throw some, throw some bones at you, but what was yeah. the, how did you frame that? So we always say you can invest as low as a hundred bucks into the campaign. We don't have a campaign running at this point. Um, we ended that a few weeks ago. 
but when we did have a campaign running and we're talking about equity crowdfunding, we said, Hey, you can invest as low as hundred dollars. The average customer, uh, we took, you know, total number of people invested, divided it up um, by the capital raise was about 300, $400. And the average card value was about $160. The LTV was, you know, $600, a little over $600. And so if you combine how much they put in and the LTV, you almost got a thousand dollars and the CAC the cost of acquisition was about a hundred dollars. So you got a 10 to one ratio wow. right there, which is very, return. Yeah, very unheard of for in the in the SaaS space. Um, you know, if you get a three to one ratio, you're you're doing good. And so metrics like that kind of told the story that equity crowdfunding is here to stay. Um, at least for a business like ours, we're very community driven with our technology. We help other small businesses build their community in five different ways, as opposed to just social media. And so we kind of dog fooded our own app, no pun intended. And intended, um, <laughs> we you know we love dogs so much that we said you know why don't we actually use our own technology to build our business and help others, you know, kind of show them the path forward in terms of where technology is going, how trends are going in marketing. And uh, so it's funny, the funny thing is not only did we raise capital, but it drove business. A lot of the people that came through equity crowdfunding became customers. A lot of our customers became investors. It was, it was such a, you know, great way to build a business and, and, you know, give a huge, you know, middle finger to a lot of those established, you know, funds and firms that, you know, are tend to be the experts in their, in, in finding the next big thing. But I think our customers were the experts in this regards because they invested 1.2 million into our, into our, our business. It's an amazing funding story. And, and, and really is, it's, uh, it's not just the, the disinterested investors. I mean, these were people yeah. that were already bought into kind of the, the idea behind it. But yep. you know, we talk about the funding side, but I'm really curious about the product itself. Yeah. So if you and I were, yeah, you know, we're, we're jumping on that elevator, unpack Hello Woofy for me and who you're yeah. trying to serve. Yeah. So I would say small business owners are, you know, the, the majority of our, our, our clientele. And when I say small business owners, I, I really mean, you know, small business, you know, a woman in the age, age range of 30 to 60 years of age, um, that tends to be our, 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 you know, majority of our customers and, you know, women-led businesses and coaching and podcasting and real estate. Uh, a lot of NFT users are coming in as well, because obviously the whole notion of building a community around a, a, an offering of that nature, it, you need a community to, to scale with. So NFT users are coming in as well. Um, and multi-level marketing, network marketing is there up there as well. So we're literally helping the smallest of small businesses. You know, they're anywhere from one to two people, maybe three people operations. On the bigger side, on the higher end side, we're talking five to 10, to maybe 15 person agencies that are just getting started or looking to scale. And so they're using our software uh, to do that. But not only are they using our software to scale social media management, but as I mentioned earlier, we've been, you know, I'm a futurist. I love sci-fi. I love Star Trek, not Star Wars. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> or, or not, but, uh, you know, I love to, you know, love to see where the technologies are going. So I said, you know, we need to automate blogs. And so now we're automating Medium and WordPress and Shopify and Webflow and, you know, all the other uh, platforms are coming up very soon. We then said smart speakers, you know, for your, for your viewers that are going to be seeing this on the, on the video, this is one example of a smart speaker. It's called the Echo Show. Some come without a screen, some hook into a screen, and this one has a screen built in. But they're half a billion and probably a billion speakers by the end of the year. You're going to see 90 years of telegrowth and development in five years very quickly. Um, are you a part of that? You know, is your product and offering your podcast, your, you know, your business on these speakers broadcasting with links, you know, you can click on the link, buy it on the speaker. And so we start, we, we now have that technology developed as well and, and, you know, adding on to it to, get, you know, give you more capabilities. And then we realized, oh my God, during the pandemic, when half a million small, small businesses shut down in the United States, you have to wonder why did it, why did that, that happen? It's because they couldn't get out their own traditional marketing uh, approaches, right? Uh, direct mail was great, but it, it kind of slowed down. You know, people walking to the door, you know, definitely halted and slowed down for digital marketing for their, for their benefits. So we realized that SEO was huge. You know, more people search, more people got things delivered, more people, you know, tried a lot of the you know, QR code came back. <laughs> um, you know, people didn't want to touch anymore. They wanted to scan and, and digitally use things. So web stories became a big topic. If you take a look at Google web stories, it's kind of like Instagram stories, but it populates on the first page of your search results, especially at the local level. Um, and it's a visual, you know, piece of, uh, uh, it's a visual product, essentially an interstitial that, you know, you click on it, it has a slideshow just like stories and it's in search. You can schedule content into search. Um, and then, uh, you know, we, we just, we're about to launch a MailChimp integration as well to automate newsletters because you know what, emails are still important and people open rates are pretty high still. Um, and then we're eventually going to do direct mail. So you can take the same message on social, 
drip sequence, a direct mail offering, postcards and letters to your customers, um, and then uh, and then be able to do text messages as well. So we truly want to be that one message that shows up everywhere consistently, create scheduled posts, multiple channels all in one, not just social. Sounds like to me, though, that when you, you were talking about actually a direct mail, that's almost like you know, 2005 called and wants their direct mail back, you know, so is that, it seems like you're, you're so, you're such a, you know, you have such a futurist mindset and you're so yeah. forward thinking and you're thinking, yeah. oh, by the way, we still have one, this channel that 37 really million, well. you know, people are still using, <laughs> you know, yeah. that we just it's doing really that. well. And it's, it's all about making things better and, and more efficient and not getting rid of things. I mean, my generation, there was a, there was a study that came out a few months ago. It said, you know, people in their twenties and thirties, are all of a sudden buying more vinyls than ever before. I have a vinyl record player at home. I have vinyls at home. And I, you know, people love the grip. They love the old school, but it has to have a new approach, right? So my vinyl record player has Bluetooth built in. It can play a CD. It can play a cassette. It can play the vinyl. It can, it's, it's a modernized version of an old, uh, older approach, but you know, I, I was seeing a couple of antique cars here, you know, they have air conditioning in them, you know, mm-hmm. they, they didn't have air conditioning. It's aftermarket though. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So my point is like, you know, you, you just got to modernize and, and still use the old stuff. So real estate agents actually still continue doing really well in direct mail. Mm. You know, when you get the postcard, yeah. you get, you know, what's been sold in your neighborhood and whatnot, like you will be able to drag and drop a postcard image into your HelloWiffy account and have it come out on your uh, social media feed and your blog all and and the post as a postcard itself and in direct mail all at the same time so you sequence your week's uh, worth of content in on in digital and then you have the postcard come out by the end of the week you're good to go you're you're going to be able to do one stop shop and then of course go live on the speakers and be and say hey this is bob this is jim this is lisa you know, here to show you what, you know, has been selling really well in Princeton, New Jersey, which is where, where I'm from, or, or New York City, you know, on the Upper West Side, this has been doing really well. Click on the link below on your smart speaker, on your TV, and let my team help you sell your next home. It is it is such a broad range of services. And yeah. how do you keep your focus? You know, <laughs> people are saying that, hey, you get too broad, you're, you're going to be good at nothing. You know, if you're, if you're good at too many, yeah. try to be good at too many things, you're good at nothing. So how do you really keep your focus in this space? I, I look at, I look to a lot of direct and indirect mentors. Like for example, Jeff Bezos is a great example. He started with a bookstore, which was online and people laughed at him, you know, just to raise a million dollars, you know, he had to go through hundreds of meetings and finally he found mm-hmm. a handful of, uh, you know, investors to do that. He started with a bookstore, he started with social media. And then he expanded to becoming the, you know, the, you know, be all end all be all solution for e-commerce online. We want to be the Uber of digital marketing, Um, because if you open up the, you know, Uber app, you can see flower delivery, you can see, you know, um, you know, courier delivery, you can see food delivery. Of course, you have the car business as well, which is the majority of what they're doing. But I I really like the analogy now of being the Uber of digital marketing. I would like to really like to say smart marketing, because one message, you know, one, one, one set of communication goes everywhere. Now you're not competing just on social media, which on social media, you get about a 5% penetration, you know, only about 5% of your audience will see. And if you don't show up consistently, which our platform helps you do that, then you're kind of out of luck with this. You can only do social, but all the other things we were talking about. And if you're speaking directly to a, a, like you said, I mean, you're reaching and helping you know, marketing agency owners that, that may be kind of early stage. Yeah. Yeah. What are the specific services that you can provide? Is it a white labeled service? Is it a, yeah. we're doing Great things question. on the back end? What, what does it look like? So we'll definitely be doing at some point a white label solution or a gray label solution at the very least. But what we're realizing right now is, um, you know, our business is growing really fast for the small business owner, you know, the underdog. Mm -hmm. And eventually we will expand to do more agency level, uh, you know, technology offerings. But um, at the moment, the only white label, uh, the gray label offering we do is for the Alexa scheduler, where we'll create the app and the skill for you. And then broadcast under your logo, your name, your description, your title, um, and, uh, you know, splash screens and all that stuff, you know, being yours. But um, that's the only thing that we've done so far. As far as the other stuff is concerned, we'll eventually do that. Uh, It just depends on agency, you know, uh, requests. You know, we have a Facebook group called Content Masters. We get roadmap feedback, roadmaps feedback every single day in there. And we're actually looking for more feedback. You know, what are you looking for when I say you, you know, our audience, your audience is looking for um, is a white label with a specific niche, white label with a specific set of features. Um, you're looking for reports that's coming up, you know, more often than not now. So we're, we're, we're all ears and 
you know, we're, we're going to change our roadmap according to our customer base. It's good. I mean, you're building a community around it as well. A, a, yeah. a, a kind of a feedback loop, you know, like Slack channel type thing that says, Hey, you know, the, the more you speak into this, I mean, is, is it almost like, and I know it, it's not probably this formal, but it seems like it's almost like a Reddit, you know, that yeah. we get enough upticks, you know, we, we may build this feature out, you know, if we have enough yeah, kind of critical we, mass of feedback. We have a lot of amazing customers that tell us every single day what they're loving, what they want us to change. Um, every Wednesday, every, every other Wednesday, we celebrate our pets, you know, it's pet Wednesdays and you'll see a slew of dog photos with our customers. And, you know, they're, they're, they're the best sidekicks, right? They're, they're, you know, the best coworkers. Um, you know, every Tuesday we do AMA Tuesday. So people, you know, suggest what things need to be improved or what the questions they have. So we're actually using our own platform to, to you know, build our own community yeah. and it's doing pretty, pretty well. If you take a look at our competitors, they don't have a Facebook group. They don't have any patents. They don't, you know, they don't think about beyond social media where the, where civilization is going. I mean, I am a futurist, but I'd love to see how through my work and my team's work, how can we put that dent in the universe and push civilization forward, not just for the next few years, but like for the next you know generation and, and marketing is going to be pretty big because communication is, is always going to be important. When you look at, at new channels yeah. and when you, you look at, I guess, the channels you're utilizing now, how much does kind of its current popularity come into play? Like, you know, it's like yeah. three years ago, boy, Snapchat was it. And then like Snapchat just almost disappeared, you know, so yeah. to speak. And then uh, like every generation, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z, it's so like, we, we do this. Well, we do yeah. this. So the boomers yeah. do this. And so how much does that, does that yeah. kind of lead your roadmap? Honestly, it's it's nine eighty five percent of things that we know really well, and then fifteen ten to fifteen percent of things that we don't know, but we have a hunch that might go really well. Like Alexa was a part of that, um, Google Web Stories was a part of that, WhatsApp integration and automating, uh, you know, uh, WhatsApp groups for businesses and masterminds was a part of that. Um, we just love building. We love building futuristic technology. We have a lot of patents now, you know, that have been issued to us. Um, we have a lot of artificial intelligence that helps you create content and scale it. So, I mean, especially with the augmented reality app that we built, like no one told us, Hey, we need augmented reality to on our phone to then see a room full of marketing content that I can pluck and, you know, pick and drop right on my calendar and then schedule it immediately or have it pop in front of my, you know, in front of my clients, I can do a presentation, augmented reality, and they don't have to be in the same office, in the same room. No one told us that. Now, when we built it, we built that proof of concept. People are like, wow, I need that now. I need it right this second. Um, so it's a little bit of both, but we love to lead by example. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're definitely the Tesla, you know, of our industry. You know, a lot of, there are a lot of Chevys, a lot of Fords out there with a lot of history and a lot of respect in the industry, but they've kind of done a disservice by falling behind um, and not pushing yeah. the small business owner forward. So we're, we're definitely coming in with a Tesla approach. That's uh, I'd, I'd like you to just take a moment and just kind of really drill down and just talk about maybe the service tiers that you provide. And like, yeah. you know, you've talked about all these, all these options Are these add-ons or these, are these included no, in those all, service tiers? So kind of yeah, walk they're us all, through that. They're all included in the, in the various membership tiers at different levels and different limits. Um, I always recommend the agency, agency plus or enterprise plan, because that gets the most cutting edge technologies that we're developing um, because it costs a lot of money to develop and it costs a lot of money to market. And, and then we, you know, bring it down to the price of a very expensive latte, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for the small business owner to do everything. So we usually recommend the 149 to 399 to 1299 plan for the year, but you, at this point you'll be grandfathered in because we are offering limited time, you know, lifetime deals for uh, every year being the same yeah. price. Um, the other plans are more for people who are like, What's technology? What's social media? I just started. I just incorporated yesterday. You just, just want to start feeling the water, testing the water. So that's the, we have plans for that as well. Um, but having said that, we're looking to consolidate our plans because we have been told by a lot of investors that we have a lot. We have six plans. Um, so we're probably going to consolidate it down to or maybe three plans. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be very simple pricing. But again, the lowest in the industry. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have I've heard so many you know, founders that talk about like, we, we had too many offerings, you yeah. know, it's like, it, it can, it's like pr analysis paralysis, you know, I yeah. couldn't make yeah. a decision that there was eight different things I had to choose from. I needed three, you know, so, so <laughs> it's like, you yeah. know, three kind of this magic number of how many levels pricing levels you needed, yep. but yep. exactly. And the beauty of, of your, your locked in lifetime pricing. I mean, it seems like to me with that pricing, you're going to get all of the updates and upgrades and, exactly. and new iterations every year, every time you, you, 
you know, release a new, a new product, but yeah. So who is your, who's your ideal avatar? If you, if you had to describe yeah. you know, whether it's an agency or whether it's an individual, who is currently your ideal avatar and where are you growing toward? Yeah, we're growing towards that small agency that is probably, wor- you know, working from a home base office. And, you know, again, like I said, majority of our customers are women, 70% are women. And so it's going to be those kinds of people. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the ideal situation right now is, again, coaches, podcasters, real estate agents, those are the ideal uh, categories that we usually sell into. Um, but yeah, that's, that would be the uh, use case. But again, like I said, we're definitely getting a lot of NFT users, we're getting a lot of masterminds jumping in as well. What about communities? What about people that are trying to build online communities and, and yeah. or they're doing digital courses or anything like, you know, consultants even? Like yeah, consultants. so consultants and coaches are pretty big for us as well. Um, and uh, like I said, every business needs a community. At the end of the day, they, there is no business that should not have a community. Even if you're a coffee shop owner, you know, be really passionate about the beans, the roast, the, you know, the flavors, the tones, the, you know, the flavor, it just everything. You have to build a community around that. Where have you found to the most successful platform to, to, I mean, you, you said you have a Facebook group, but why Facebook yeah. versus, versus any other platform out there and why, and how have yeah. you really made that successful? Yeah, I would say uh, having billions of users on a platform really helps because uh, both from a paid side, we do really well on Facebook. And then the community, 99% of the you know population is on Facebook. And so we can ask them to be on there, um, be, you know, part of the community, you know, we can re- retarget them across the internet when it comes to uh, paid advertising. So there's Facebook is probably the best one. And then Instagram uh, being a product of Instagram, uh, being a product of Facebook, that also is a good example. Um, it's harder to build a community with like massive back and forth communication because it's not a, it's not like a feed, um, right. it's, you know, it's just, just these are images and videos, but um, groups are by far the, by far the easiest way to do that. Oh yeah. I mean, when you mentioned uh, Facebook makes perfect sense. When you mentioned Instagram, I was having a little harder time kind of imagining what that looks like to build. I mean, there's something about building a following, but actually building a community around, around the service offering. But it is, it is such an an amazing, you know, journey you've taken in a very short period of time. I mean, Hello Wolf was born what year? Uh, Well, we started in 2016, but we really relaunched and rebuilt everything in the last two and a half years. And it's, it's amazing. Like what is your, what's kind of been that upward hockey stick, you know, up to the right growth of user base? Yeah. So we have over 10,000 now at this point, and we're definitely, you know, looking to have tens of, you know, nine, by close to a hundred thousand by next year um, at the current rate. And uh, you know, we, we were looking to raise capital. We're looking to find more partners, more channel partners, masterminds. And so we're definitely on that upward trajectory and, and any feedback, you know, any advice would be great from your community and people who are listening in would be, would be the ideal situation. Yeah. So if, if you had another company or whatever that would collaborate with you, what would that look like? What would, what would a kind of a, you know, affiliate yeah. service, other, other opportunities, what are they? Yeah. So we definitely give commissions for affiliates. Um, we would love to find anyone who represents, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands and millions of people that are small business owners. So we've been talking to a couple of very well-known entrepreneurs and investors who are pretty famous online. They represent, in one case, you know, the person you know represents hundred thousand people that he has taught how to run a social media academy or a social media business, mm-hmm. but he doesn't recommend any technologies. It's just a course, right? So that's an example of a channel partner that would mean millions of dollars in revenue for us, and you know, millions of dollars in, in commission for for this person as well. So other notable, you know, individuals like that who represent massive following of underdogs, small business owners. Is there any thought that you like build this into a a a marketing agency portfolio offering? Like, is it? You yeah, know, you talked about kind of white gray label idea, but um, what would it look like to to provide this service as part of their you know greater offering? It would probably be a white label solution. Um, we've definitely had more strategic conversations with other firms and and software platforms about integration and whatnot. We. You know, we're talking to a speaking organization right now that has thousands of speakers and we're looking to automate their uh, page as well. We're, you know, we just integrate with Jim Edwards, who's 
uh, who's a business partner with Russell Brunson, founder of ClickFunnels. Mm -hmm. And so his website is directly integrated with our website. So you, you can create the content there and then ingest it. And then our AI can optimize it and schedule it out in as many ways as you want. And so those strategic conversations we're always looking for. Um, in fact, we're probably going to have a more formal developer section on our website at some point. Um, we do offer a developer section for the technology, the two patents that we have in terms of uh, using our, our technology in your um, in your platform, but we're probably going to have the whole platform, uh, you know, powered by an API at some point. So I, I took a look, took a little journey around the website before we jumped on the call today. And as I was looking at the different service levels, I, I literally the question came to my mind, why wouldn't you do this? I mean, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting no kickbacks here for being a Hello Woofy fanboy here. But I mean, the idea of yeah. the services provided for the cost, you know, that that you have on your different service levels. I'm thinking, you know, good night. You, you bring one client in and it would like pay for itself, you yeah. know, for the yeah. year. I mean, it's and I'm not trying to oversell that, but I. Um, and did you see the subtle way he's been trying to pitch me for a couple of three times that he keeps mentioning podcasters as, as an ideal avatar here? But again, I mean, even even like, you know, getting your show or any, any you know, on this device, like saying, hey, this is, you know, let's say this is Lisa. I have my new latest show coming out. Click on, you know, ask for my skill, ask for my app. And it'll be like, hey, play the Lisa marketing app or the, you know, skill. And then all of a sudden you got Lisa and all her briefings of like quick two minute, you know, synopsis of the, all our podcasts that I can click on the podcast link and then go to her website, you know, read the show notes, read, you know, make a purchase right on the speaker. Um, and this is just a speaker, you know, that hooks up into your Fire TV, your Fire Stick, you know, all the uh, Amazon Alexa devices. Um, and you can just one message, one message and it shows up everywhere. That it's it's amazing what you've built and and it's going to be so much fun to see as as you know Hello Woofy kind of matures into whatever that's 2.0 version or 3.0 or 4.0 yeah. versions look <laughs> like. But where do you think that this space is headed, Mister Futurist, in the next you know 18 months, 36 months, or whatever? What is it going to look yeah. like? What are the what are the things we can't see today that you can already see are coming? The the whole movement for Web three and Meta. Uh, worse is is going to catch on even faster as hardware technologies continue to grow, costs go down, uh, cellular services get better and better. So you can have more, you know, you can have more bandwidth and, and and ability to see the information, experience the different kinds of ecosystems. I mean, I remember when I was in college, like I would not be able to render a full video on YouTube uh, on the bandwidth I had back then, right? But now I can watch a full length video. I have unlimited data. Um, it's just as civilization moves forward in, in, in both bandwidth and information and hardware, it's going to be allowing the metaverse to come a lot easier. We're actually even looking at, you know, making a plug and play uh, capability to schedule content onto the sides of buildings that you own in the metaverse and making a standardized use of that. Um, so you can schedule to social blogs, direct mail, smart speakers, newsletters, you know, web stories, all that, plus your properties that you own in the metaverse. So that you can, you know, depending on who comes by, you can have content there. Um, we're going to do something similar with Twitch as well. Um, In-stream, uh, you know, integration. So you can have scheduled messages come up while you're playing the game or, or you're on Twitch or even panels on the bottom. They call them panel extensions. So uh, a lot of things have never been done before. <laughs> Well, I, I'm such a futurist. I'm putting all my money in my space. So I think that, uh, you know, that seems like a real smart investment, you know, yeah. in the, in the yeah. next next six, six to 12 months or so. But I, I really just love that kind of the journey that that you, you guys have taken and just the amazing things you've done in a very short period of time. And uh, we're going to transition now to one of my favorite parts of the of the interview that Itamar has done since the very beginning. And this is kind of our, our like lightning round. And these are these are questions that are probably going to catch you off guard. And I'm, I'm yeah. going to smile at some. You may get angry at some. You're going to look back and whoa, what, you know, why did you ask me that? But there's there's a method to the madness here because these are all, you know, kind of data driven. The the whole idea behind these questions. But did you have a a happy childhood? Yes. <laughs> so how has that impacted you in what you do today? Uh, design. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I, I mean, I would say carpentry. My love for carpentry started very early. Uh, all, all of the Age of Empires, playing Age of Empires, you learn a lot about resource management, building a startup. There, there are a lot of little examples like gaming and carpentry or arts and crafts, which goes into UI, UX, 
marketing funnels and all that stuff. I mean, even till this day, I love playing around in Illustrator, which is like my virtual playground crafts for craftsmanship, I guess. And, uh, you know, we built the entire website, mockups in Illustrator. I've done a lot of things in Illustrator. So yes, <laughs> a lot of those lessons come, come in handy. I, I don't, I'm not sure if calculus came in handy though. <laughs> <laughs> Has it ever? Yeah. So tell me what movies impacted your life the most? Oh, Pursuit of Happiness, The Secret, definitely two great movies um, that are very much inspirational and you know, law of attraction, positive thinking and all that stuff. So tell me a book that that uh, you would suggest everyone read. Traction, um, by I believe his name is Gabriel Weinberg, who's the founder of DuckDuckGo. He l- talks about multiple ways of um, getting traction for your business, multiple channels that you should be experimenting with. I think he says about two or three at a time. Um, and so Traction is a really, really good book for that. And then, of course, back to the secret. So think back at the earliest moment you thought about starting a business, what was going through your mind? Uh, I could do it better. <laughs> this is, these are common themes here. I thought they were yeah. coming up with, do you have kids? Do I have kids? No. Yeah. Not no yet. kids yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> so tell me one thing that is, has impacted you greatly today. Um, the need to be frugal and prove people that they're wrong for not investing and being part of this journey. And, uh, and, and so we keep proving ourselves right. (laughs) Yeah. How does faith come into play in decisions you make? Everything happens for a good reason. And, uh, and, and there's, there's always something, there's always a reason why this happened, whether it's positive or not. And you'll connect the dots looking back as Steve Jobs said. That is, I was going to say, that's very Jobsian of you there in your, in your quote. But so, man, I appreciate you just taking time today and just really walking us through this, the story of Hello Woofy. And, and it's just great to, to reconnect with you as, as an individual and just hearing the things that are happening in at just kind of this quantum pace, you know, that yeah. you're, you're trying to, you're trying to corral this tornado that you, you kind of unleashed here, but yeah. what would you wrap us up with today? What just give us one thing that, uh, that you you've learned as a, as a founder that you think would yeah. be really salient for, uh, you know, others that are just getting started kind of in this, in the agency space yeah. or whatever. So I was talking to Peter Shankman, who's really well known in New York and, and he, one of the things he loves talking about is the story of two, two people running away from a bear. And he says, well, if you're the, if you're one of the people, the only thing you have to make sure is that you run faster than the other person. Right. And, and the analogy is basically, if you're building a startup, you don't have to build it really, really fast. You just have to outlast your competition. That is a great way to end our, 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 my first episode of the just to uh, just once again hear it. It's, it's great to see what you've done even the last six months, you know, that yeah. we've, or six to nine months that, that uh, when we talked earlier, but uh, Arjun, thank you again for just sharing your story. Thank you for yeah. just being um, an inspiration to so many of us, because I mean, it's, it's amazing. You just, you seem to take this, this so uh, it seemed to think that there's such hard work, but you seem to do it so graciously, you know, which is amazing to see. But where where can people find out more about Hello Woofy and and yeah. what's the best way to grab grab you on the in the IoT? Yeah, I would say um, just go to hellowoofy.com. My email is there, my phone number is there, all that stuff is there, and just tell us what we can do more for your underdog business, whether it's a feature, it's a community aspect recommendation, whether you want us to do more events. Um, you know, a lot of our events are free and for our customer basis. So let us know. Go to hellowoofy.com. It's been a pleasure to host the uh, Marketing Umbrella podcast by Itamar Shafir. Learn more about that at umbrellaus.com. Arjun, thanks again and have a great week. Thanks. Take care. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of the Marketing Umbrella podcast where we provide the information you need from successful leading marketers to build and grow your digital marketing agency. To learn more, go to UmbrellaUS.com.